This is a tap pot. This was made probably eight years ago um, at home, um, hand building, and it's a technique that I call tab potting. It's um, just made with little round um, balls of clay put together while they're really wet. So the first thing you need is a, a yardstick. And the yardstick is because before you make a large pot, make sure you got room. How tall can you make it? How wide can you make it? You can make it the width and the height because it's going to shrink. So that's the first thing is you want to make sure, like when I made this one, I just had the 1027 to fire it in. So I wanted to make sure, like this is about 21 and a half, 22 inches by 19, 20 high. So I just made sure that I could get it in there. Now I've got a big kiln in the back, so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. So I'm using K6 or Shotman because it's a sculpture clay. I have no idea if I'm doing it what. <laughs> so I have two bats. And one bat is the larger bat that I'm going to be working on here that's on the sculpture stand. And you can do this on your wheel. And this is fun. And then this is just to cut the round. So this is all you need. I mean, this is a pouncer. You guys got a pouncer? Bonnie, I know you do. You got a pouncer, Barbara. It's just it's a rod inside a, a baggie. And so it's like just grog inside a baggie with a rubber band. And then I just put, I cut up an old sheet and put that around so it wouldn't stick to the clay. Kitty litter works too. Kitty litter works. So I'm just going to make, um, I'm working on the theory of half inch for all the walls. This is the wrist that I grow too. And it has healed so well, I tell you what. Any questions? Tell me. That's not mushy it. clay either. I'm just saying. No, but it's pretty <laughs> soft. soft. This is pretty soft. Is it soft? Yeah, it's pretty soft. I tested it just because I want to do the tab with this. So it's kind of a method that I just named with my thinking about Madeline and how she made her pots. I could have caught it, called it Gallo Pots, I guess, and contacted her. I'm not sure she's that. No gossip on the No gossip on the website. <laughs> I, <don't know. coughs> I need to do another vlog because I really enjoy it and I, I really did enjoy the um, one about how Dennis and I met. No. And then I had to run it by him to make sure it's, the story was true <laughs> uh, from him. Because, I mean, if, if, I, if you ask two people how they met or how their relationship went at the beginning, you get, I think, pretty sometimes different stories. It's very quiet today. It has been beyond hot. So this is just an old steel knife that I covet because I love finding them at flea markets. They work so well. That's an old filet knife, right? Yeah, I did. So I just did this so that I can take it and put it on here. And this will be, I don't do any scoring, cross hatching, slipping, nothing, because I put it together very wet. So what I've done is on this bat, on top of the sculpture stand, I put a little bit of medium grog, and then I guess I'm getting kind of into my yardsticks. I just use the yardstick to even it out. And 
the reason I put the grog down so that I can get it off of this bat after it weighs, this pot weighs, this large pot weighs 24 pounds. And so I don't want to have to sacrifice this bat. So this is so simple. I don't know how boring this will be because all I do is take a bit of clay like this. So you, you have to have something to think about and overlap them, put them on. And, and actually, I, I believe it was when Val uh, Cushing came and he put grog underneath his piece that I thought about putting the grog on here. So I'm just going to push it in. And I'll go back and paddle it. And for right now, I just don't want it to shift too much because it's pretty loose. So this is it. <laughs> this is the whole process, guys. <laughs> you you came, you saw, but you can see. I for me, I think it's very very soothing. And you can see as I put them on, I just overlap them. It's something you can do with, I think, with most anybody with uh, obviously with the elderly I'm doing it <laughs> I can Not see yet. I can see little gaps in in here I can see little tiny air gaps but when I put the second course on so this is the first course which will take about 15 minutes it goes pretty fast. And so as you build up the layers, you're doing, you're going to push it in or out as you want the pot, very similar to a pinch pot or a quarter mm -hmm, pot. Mm -hmm. So when I get to the third level, I'll start paddling. I usually will build up the first day about a foot. I haven't made that many of these, but I think I did about a foot. Um, on this and then I covered the rim I moistened the rim covered it with plastic for a couple days and I worked on this for three days this one for three days and at the end of three days you have a um, almost two foot pot you know with that's a lot of fun to make and you can do this anywhere you could sit on your wheel on a potter's wheel and make it, or you, I mean, having a banding wheel or a sculpture stand is ideal, but um, a little lazy Susan. Why are they called lazy Susans? Susan was lazy and didn't want to pull the shelf out. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So, you might want to stop the video I mean this and and the, do a time lapse or something because yeah. this is pretty kind uh, of so boring. then on the second course what I'm going to do is go in between and what need the decision that needs to be made by the time you get to the third course is do you want to see the tabs inside and out do you want to well you can't really do that and compress it so what you need to do is decide, do you want to see the tabs inside or out? Because you need to be able to pull these together. And that's why I have this triangular rib. As you can see, this has been scratched. And that really bring, makes it so that you don't get any cracks. So by the third course, while you're putting these uh, together, you really need to think, what um, do I want to be able to see any of these? I find these nice to look at you know it I, they're pleasing to to look at but i can see a little gaps here that will form cracks so i would either put a coil on the inside or go through and take my finger and my thumb and compress this so the second course is going to be just in between each one very simple and you want to overlap this, this second one. 
and all So your discs look about a quarter of an inch thick, some of them. They, the, the discs themselves are, I would say almost a half inch. You think they're more, everything with me is a third of an inch. So let's see. You're right, they're, they're right at between a, a fourth and a third. And I do compress them. So the bottom is going to be a half inch thick and the walls will probably okay. be about a third of an inch thick. But if, if you want to go over and pick that pot up, you know, um, and you'll, I mean, because of the shape and it, it's uneven on the outside, it kind of feels good. It's easy to carry. Um, it had been on my back porch without a plant in it. I mean, it makes a nice planter because it mm -hmm. is still, I fired it to cone nine rather than 10. So the clay isn't fully vitrified. So it is still a little porous for a plant. But um, <coughs> now that we've finished the second level, we're gonna start on the third. And the third level um, needs to be completed before I really start um, pouncing, using the pouncer or the good old paddle on it. And I love this paddle because it's, it's got, I love this paddle because it's got a curve, a, not a curve, but an angular um, handle on it so that I can really, I don't have to adjust my wrist, but the paddle uh, adjusts naturally. So we're gonna start on the third one and it's the same thing. Start in between, overlap them. And to me, when I, made the large one that's on the table it it was amazing to me that in an hour and a half i could have a foot you know, a 15 inch wide piece and a 13 inch tall piece finished uh for the day in just an hour so you don't want to do more than say 18 inches at a time on this with the width of the the uh, tabs because they'll start to slump and then you'll defeat the project. If you want to go out, you place the tabs a little closer, uh, farther apart and aim them out just a little bit and then when we paddle we'll adjust for that. If you want to come in, you can place the tabs either on the inside or place them closer together. So I'll demonstrate that. Right now I just want it to be almost straight up and down because I like the one that I can carry around even though it's a large piece I can still if it doesn't have a plant in it I can carry it that would make a great fruit bowl just at that height just at this height mm -hmm. I have a, a, a second pot thank you I have a second tab pot that is a planter that I glazed um, and I really see if I can give you like the same it. answer Barbara can you use other clays other than the shopman I'm using the Shopman uh, because it has almost 30% grog, and I can be pretty rough with this, and it can be fairly thick, but I don't see why you couldn't use a clay such as B-Mix 5 with grog or B-Mix 10 with grog or 66 that has sand in it. Any clay body that has grog in it um, is going to let you do this tab technique. You can see that when I put these tabs on, if I had to stop and score and slip in between each one, it would be painstakingly slow. But um, if you want to do this, um, you can do it with any clay body, but you have to adjust if you don't have grog. And yeah, I would say that if you don't have grog or you want to use porcelain, um, then you would need to slip and score. Okay, so now we're all set and we can start. Um, I just want to press, make sure, go around and press. And you can see having a banding wheel or a sculpture stand or putting it on a wheel of some sort, even if it's a lazy Susan, as long as it doesn't wobble too much, you can compress a little bit. And I, I feel like I don't, I, even though I like the pattern, inside of the tabs I want to be I would rather be sure that it doesn't crack apart and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around with the pouncer on the outside real quick 
Would you explain your pouncer again, how you made it? Yeah, the pouncer is uh, quite simply uh, just a little baggie, and I put medium grog. I put medium grog inside a baggie, and then filled it about halfway full. And then I gathered it, put a rubber band around it, and then I simply took a an old pillowcase and covered it because if you try and use the plastic it would stick and it would make um, just ugly little plasticky crinkles on the outside. I'm forgetting my words today. So I'm going to pounce it all the way around one time. This is a great technique to use if you like audiobooks. So then I'm going to take and I'm going to start using the rib and I'm just going to scratch the inside together. And this is pretty rough looking at first, but after I, this is the best technique that I have come across for making sure that it doesn't pop apart. So I just want to get that first ring of tabs done, and then I'll just work up. And I want to make sure that the, I can see, uh, I don't know if you can zoom in and see that some of these um, have bigger spaces in between them. So you want to make sure, and you actually pull the clay from one tab to the, to the next so that it overlaps. And I'm keeping my left hand on the outside to brace. I'm just really scratching it. And this changes that look from that nice kind of um, warm round tabs to this scratchy look. But you can go back over this if you don't like this and uh, take the time with a sponge and really smooth it out. But this kind of will make sure that, well, nothing makes sure, but it will help so that you do not get cracking. And that's the best that I know. I, I use a lot of paddling to compress the clay. So that's pretty much how I do every single layer. Every I don't do it every round, but every second or third round I will go back. And you want to make sure I've got, like here, so I've gone across, and now I'm going to go back and go up. And the only other part that I really worry about, once I get this upward scratching finished, then I'm finished with that first and second tab round. But now I'm going to go back, because you really don't want this to pop off of the base. So I'm going to go back. From here on out, it's more aesthetics. Do you want it to be smooth? Do you want it to be rough? I like the rough on the outside. I kind of prefer a little bit smoother on the inside, just from the standpoint if you're going to put plants inside here, and if you ever want to change it, um, the roughness can really tear up your hands. And when you're cleaning it out, um, I clean my large pot out in the bathtub with a sprayer and it really came clean um, fairly easily with just a brush and warm water. So that's a pretty easy method, but if it were rough on the inside, it would be tougher to, uh, to clean. And you want to think, I, I've had this pot at least eight, nine years and it has held up really well. And a lot of times it's outside through the New York, upstate New York weather in the winters. And, uh, also, the shape of the pot matters. 
when you're going to leave it outside. If it comes up and out like this, then um, it can expand in the winter. If it's closed in and round, you want to bring it inside. So that's it for this. I'm going to paddle it a little bit, but we've got these, this ring done. That's what I do each each round, and then I'm going to paddle it. I put the pouncer on the inside and use the paddle on the out. The paddle can do the the wood can compress the clay so much better than my hand against the pouncer. My hand is much more. Um, not as dense and as strong, so I can really compress the clay so much better with the wood. It might seem redundant to go back and do this, but if you don't, you're going to get cracking, unfortunately, because this is a lot of tabs. Okie doke. So that's it. I'm going to just pull it in and I'm going to add a fourth ring. And that's basically the whole technique. You want to decide what shape you want your piece to be. I, at this point, I want the wall to come fairly straight up, but I like a little bit of round. And then I'm going to go back. Um, and I'll do this off camera, but I, I just want to clean all this up. If I have any digs in it, I'll add a little bit. I'll take a tiny bit of clay and make a little coil and add it in if I you know if I really feel I want this to be a functional piece like for um, a platter or a plate or a large bowl that I want to get this as smooth as possible if it's a planter it won't matter quite as much that's it that's the tab technique oh, this is good um, it's such a beautiful did I show you the killer yeah. shirt